165 Democrats were required to reach that level, more Democrats than Republicans. Is this a problem for Mike Johnson or not? Well, we're seeing bipartisanship, right? We haven't yeah, we done sin these, in Washington. <laughs> these long stretches, and now we're seeing uh, we're seeing some real bipartisan cooperation on this. Um, but you know, you were asking about what happens to Speaker Johnson, and I think yeah. we've been asking that question ever since he got put in that, <laughs> ever since he got his gavel. Sure. And I, I think the best way to look at it is he's somebody who is literally living on the edge, right? Mm -hmm. He's going, you know, day by day, maybe hour by hour. We'll see more what might happen over the weekend. So he doesn't know the answer to this. Will question. Democrats rescue him? I, I don't know if he knows. You know, he certainly. Republicans, I, I talked to some Republican fundraisers um, this week and said, you know, is Johnson going to have trouble raising money with this threat hanging over him if he does survive? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, he's probably OK if he stays in this in this chair until uh, the elections. But if somebody comes in next, it's just going to be a free for all. And how does a party sort of get itself, the Republican Party, how does it sort of get itself together and make a pitch mm -hmm. for keeping control of the House in the November elections? Well, certainly when it really right now is just a small number of House Republicans who seem interested in kicking Johnson out of the job. Certainly the House Intelligence Committee chair, Mike Turner, doesn't seem to want that to happen. We talked to him yesterday about the fate of Speaker Johnson, and this is what he told us. Speaker Johnson is being incredibly courageous, and you've heard him, and as you were reporting, he is saying he's doing the right thing, and uh, certainly he should be rewarded for doing the right thing. Bringing this bill uh, to the to the floor so that we can pass this on to the Senate and uh, send it to the president's desk is essential for our national security. Kate, obviously Marjorie Taylor Greene might disagree about what the right thing is. In this instance, she does seem to think the speaker is doing all of the wrong things. Can you just remind us procedurally what will happen if she decides after the Ukraine aid vote, for example, to act on the motion to vacate? How soon could we actually be dealing with members having to cast votes to decide Johnson's fate? Well, it could be soon. First of all, Johnson could decide to bring it up to you know a vote to table the motion. In which case, that's where we could see Democrats, which they didn't do for Kevin McCarthy when he was speaker. They did not vote to table the motion, which essentially yep. ignores it. So that would be the first thing. And if, if enough Democrats and Republicans vote to table that motion, then it goes away for right then. And then, you know, if they don't, um, then it sets in motion the same thing that we saw with Kevin McCarthy back in October, where he ultimately lost his job. It's also worth noting it would stop all business on the floor, right? So everything we're talking about here, Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, would go on hold again while they had to manage that over the course of two legislative days, right? We've got three Republicans on this now, and we still don't know if they're going to make this a privileged resolution. We'll be watching tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now you've got Paul Gosar, to your point, That's Joe, right. mm -hmm. alongside Tom Massey and Marjorie Taylor Greene, who, of course, already had made this threat. Kat, Kate Ackley of Bloomberg Government, thank you so much, as always, for your wonderful coverage of Congress. Now we want to turn to our other top story, Israel's apparent strike inside Iran overnight. Secretary of State Antony Blinken did not directly confirm that attack while speaking today at the G7 foreign ministers meeting in Italy, but he did have this to say. The United States has not been involved in any offensive operations. Uh, what we're focused on is our work to de-escalate uh, tensions, um, to de-escalate from any potential conflict. Uh, you saw Israel on the receiving end of an unprecedented attack, um, but our focus has been on, of course, making sure that Israel can effectively defend itself, but also de-escalating tensions, uh, avoiding uh, conflict, uh, and that remains our focus. Let's go now to Bloomberg's Greg White. So, Greg, as we hear the Secretary of State talking about de-escalating tensions, is it the prevailing thinking now in Washington that actually this strike was more de-escalatory than escalatory because Israel could have gone a lot further than it did? Absolutely. So far, when you look at the situation, if you think back to a week ago, we were anticipating uh, Iran's retaliation on, on Israel, and there was great fear that this was going to be a new spiral of you know, direct strikes from Iran on Israel, something we'd never seen before in the decades of the, the shadow war between these countries. Yeah. And through a series of dangerous but seemingly choreographed actions, things have 
so far at least managed to be oh, contained. So you had the Israeli strike the, oh, over the, or the, the Iranian strike over the weekend, uh, which Israel and its allies were able to oh, largely neutralize, and then this strike that Israel hasn't claimed responsibility for, but uh, seems pretty clear uh, where it came from, D- doesn't seem to have done too much damage inside Iran, but sent the message that, uh, well, if you're going to fire at us from your territory, we have the ability to do that to you. So mm-hmm. I think the question, there, there's very cautious oh, oh, hope here that at least this episode has been contained. They also proved a point, though, didn't they? W- without causing much damage, that they could strike deep inside Iran, in this case, an area that is home to Iran's nuclear facilities and a couple of military bases, without being intercepted the way Iran was when it attacked Israel. Did it say more with what it did here than it might have with a more pronounced strike? Well, certainly, I think the Israelis wanted to send a signal with this that, uh-huh. that, that, that as you say, that they, they could they could evade the defenses and that 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 uh, if they really wanted to strike, they could do something substantially yeah. bigger. Similarly, the, the Iran was trying to send a message too that that we're not deterred by this; we're, mm-hmm. we're ready to take these risks. Uh, so the next, there's no guarantee that the next time this kind of thing happens, it will be as easily contained. Right. Uh, it, it's certainly been a, a very stressful week of, of diplomacy on all sides to try to to, to, to keep this uh, li- as limited as it was uh, with, uh, in, in the circumstances. 